so in this lesson we will be learning about devops principles so now in this module we will be learning an important concept of devops principles and the calmr model previously it is called a calms model so let's jump into the lesson number one which is principles of devops so what do you think of principles of devops so if you guys have time please have a look into this book called the phoenix project so it is a very important book which tells you about the major principles of devops so the major principles of devops actually lies in three ways which is the flow which is like the first way is understanding the flow or you can obviously called as systems thinking so you have to think on how your system is going to perform based on your code and then only you have to write your code the next way is like amplifying feedback loops so you have to create a lot of feedback rules within your team internally to understand where it went wrong and how to improvise your process and the last way is continuous continuous experimenting and learning so you should not actually think about failures you should be doing a lot of experimentations and you should learn day by day so that you can improvise your devops flow so let us see that three ways in a pictorial representation so what do you mean by a systems thinking uh, systems thinking is nothing but consider for example if you have a production system which is actually running on java 8 okay and uh, your development team has got a new requirement like you should use java 12 for your new feature so while designing a code or while developing a code the developers has to think the system first they should obviously think like okay my current java version is 8 on the production if i'm actually using java 12 now will it be compatible for the production will there be any problem so before writing the code you should always think system in your mind and then you have to write it accordingly obviously the operation should also think like okay there is a new requirement from the client to use java 12 whereas the current production system is actually running on java 8 then what should they do whether it is okay to upgrade or if they are going to upgrade if there is going to be any uh, issues that will be arising so both the operations and the dev has to think towards the system perspective that is the first way the next way is nothing but amplifying the feedback loops so what do you mean by amplifying feedback loops you should obviously get a lot of feedbacks from the developer and the operations team each other so that they can improvise their process so there are multiple ways to actually give a feedback we will be seeing it on our next slide the third way is nothing but continuous learning and experimentation you should obviously do a lot of experimentation that is where your innovation and creativity comes into the picture not always the first attempt itself you will get it successful you will be able to run multiple attempts and there will be multiple failures but still you should not be worrying about like why is my code getting failed why am i getting so much of failures no because failure is a stepping stone of success so also you should be able to learn a lot of things on daily basis so let us learn the first way in a detailed one so the first way i told you is a systems thinking or you call it as a flow so you should obviously understand like the flow of work and you should be able to remove the constraints as i was telling about you should be able to think on systems perspective and remove the unwanted constraints or unwanted dependencies from the system and you should not pass any of your defects downstream what do you mean by downstream for example if you are actually running it from the production you should not pass that defects to the qa and to the development team the always the stream has to go upstream it should not always go downstream towards and you should not always allow the local optimization to go, cause the global degradation what does that mean your local system configuration should not affect your global system configuration you should always think on the systems perspective and you should be able to understand the entire system before designing or before coding anything the second way as i was talking about it's a feedback loop you should be able to understand and respond to the customers both the internal customer as well as the external customers for that what should be able to do you should create a lot of feedback loops and you should always have 
a embedded knowledge of where it is required what it is required and these are all the different examples of feedback loops you can create an automated testing and get the testing results you can have a peer-to-peer -peer review for the production changes you could use a lot of monitoring tools to understand where is a gap you can use a lot of dashboards you can use logs you can improvise your process with the help of your measurements you can use a post-mortem analysis post-mortem analysis is nothing but your rca which is root cause analysis if something goes wrong from the root cause analysis you can understand where exactly the problem came in how to resolve those problems and everything and you should always do an on-call rotation because if one person is always supporting then that becomes a dependency whereas you should rotate your on-call person so that all the members on the team can understand what is a feedback happening and you should have your change management incident management and problem management data so these are all the different examples of how to use a feedback loops the third way is like continual experimental and learning you should always allocate time for your daily improvement and you should always create rituals to reward the team for taking risks see always the uh, appreciation is a main scope to increase your customer satisfaction whether your customer or whether your team is actually doing something new please do not scold them just encourage them and tell them like it is obviously it will take a lot of time for them also to achieve on a very first attempt but try to encourage them try to motivate them which will help them to do much better scope and always introduce flaws faults on the system so that you would know how your system is behaving and what are the improvements that you need to do on your system and always do a safe experimentation and innovations like bringing in a lot of hackathons bringing in a lot of competitions within the team and other things which helps people also to innovate and to find out the ways to improvise your system so uh, you would have heard about netflix okay so they have this every year regular program called as chaos monkey uh, which has been done by the senior army so what do you mean by chaos monkey chaos monkey on a nutshell is nothing but they have a five to six group of members who would be going into a data center and they would be obviously destroying the entire code and the entire systems and still they would be finding out like whether they are providing a downtime or not so you would also be thinking on such aspects like you have to bring in a fault into your system and you have to bring in a lot of problems into your system and you have to find out how to resolve that how is your system corresponding to that particular fault or a problem how it is responding to that how can i overcome that so that is how you are getting stronger based on your failures okay and obviously how to increase a learning culture you have to increase a learning culture by bringing in a lot of portals you have to uh, learn from a lot of udemy's linux academies and every other sites which is providing your lot of learning uh, programs from youtube you have to create a training skills you have to do a cross training between your teams you have to incorporate a lot of learnings and uh, you have to use a technology to accelerate it and you have to allow mistakes from the learning and making uh, results from the visible learning and by doing all these things people will also learn a lot and people will be able to learn from their mistakes and people will be able to share their knowledge so i hope this will give you an understanding of what is the basic principle of devops what are three ways of how to achieve devops and what is a phoenix project so when you get time please try to read that phoenix project so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you missed up on anything or if you want to have a deeper dive in devops then we have something really special for you we have our free class on DevOps for beginners, what, why, and how to get higher paid jobs. All you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash DevOps02. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL. Save that URL, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.